Today we'll be looking at how we use both Norton's theorem and Thevenin's theorem to solve a given circuit. So let's say they are, they've given us a circuit and they are asking us to use both Norton's and Thevenin's theorem to solve the circuit. So please, this is Atega Tech Academy. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more. Let us look at our first question. They said use Norton's and Thevenin's theorem to find the current in the two ohm resistor connected between E and F in the circuit below. So this is E and F, this branch. So they are saying we should use Thevenin's and Norton's theorem to calculate the current through this. So to calculate the current, to using Thevenin's theorem, first of all, I will use Thevenin's theorem afterwards, then I will use Norton's theorem. So using Thevenin's theorem, we will take the two out and we short circuit it. Uh, open circuit it and name the two terminal uh, and name here VTH. So after naming here VTH, I'll have to now apply, let's say the current that will flow through this. Let's name it I1. And the current that will be delivered here. Let's name it I2. Then we'll now have to apply KVL, we have to apply KVL to this loop. And let's say when we realize that when this I2 starts to flow, it gets here, the same I2 flow because there's an open circuit here, no current will come to this VTH, uh, this branch. So two, I2 also flow through this 5 ohm resistor. So I2 gets to this point. I2 gets to this point. So here is also I2. But what do we also realize? We realize that here, uh, the sum of current entering is, at this node, sum of current entering is equal to sum of current leaving. So we can say the current coming down here is I1 plus I2. After analyzing our circuit like this, so when we also get here, when we get to this node, we realize that I1 will come back here and I2 will come. So meaning the current that will pass through these two will also be I2. Then we'll now have to take a loop equation for each of them. So here we'll take our loop in a clockwise direction like this. Here we'll take a loop in an anti-clockwise direction. So doing that, so using the uh, Thevenin's theorem, loop at B, C, D, A, B. So in this first loop, we apply KVL in this first loop, and we see that we are moving from a lower potential to a higher potential, and the voltage that was there was 7 volts. So we had our 7 volts here and our 10 volts here. So we write our 7 here. So it will be 7, 7 plus 3I2 plus 3I1. So combining them, simplifying them, we get our first equation, which is because of 7 plus 5I1 plus 3I1. Then we'll now take our big loop, this loop, starting from here, that is C, G, H, D, C. So taking that big loop, this big loop, we realize that we are moving in the, we'll, let's take it in the anti-clockwise direction. And here we realize that here we are moving from a higher potential to a lower potential, meaning that is a drop in voltage. Then our 10 here becomes minus. So we we'll write our equation then 2 plus, is equals to 2i2 plus 5i2 plus 3i1 plus i2. So writing that and simplifying it, we come and get i2. Writing the whole KVL equation for this, we come and get I2. After getting our I2, we now solve equation 1 and equation 2 simultaneously. This one, you can use our calculator to do that. Then we get our I1 as 38 over 17, and I2 as minus 71 over 51. Then we now need to write a loop equation for, in order to find KVL. So we need to write a loop equation for VTH. So VTH is flowing in this direction. So we are moving in the clockwise. Let's say we are taking it in the clockwise direction. KVL in the clockwise direction. So KVL in the clockwise direction. 
28 here is equals to um is equals to all these currents i2 the currents i2 this all of them are going against the direction of our vintage so it just becomes minus minus so we are going in the clockwise direction so vth here is equals to minus 5 i2 minus 3 i1 minus then simplifying the equation we get vth is equals to minus 10 i2 minus 3 i1 we found the value of i2 and i1 already so we simply substitute to find vth and we find our vth as 7.2157 volts after finding VTH, the next thing is to find RTH. And they said to find RTH, we have to short circuit the voltage sources. So we just replace it with a short circuit. Then we will draw our circuit like this. After redrawing our circuit, we get um, this. Then we now have to look into this terminal, looking into this terminal to calculate our RTH. Our RTH. But first of all, we realize that this two and this three are in power. They are parallel to each other. So two times three all over uh, two plus three will get 1.2. Resolving that, we can now clean that out and redraw our circuit. So we get 1.2. Then we realize that these two and this 1.2 are in series. And when we combine them, they become in series with this. So when we combine this five, 1.2 and 2 you will get 8.2 then we realize that this 8.2 and this 2 are also in parallel then resolving that them that way this is how to resolve them then finally we come and get our answer our R, our rth now becomes one point this course when you add this you get 8.2 and in parallel with this course there is a node here it should split but because there's an open circuit it's not splitting so that's how we still use that concept here so that the whole of this becomes in parallel with this so this is your answer you get after calculating our rth as 1.67 ohm we need to now draw our thevenin's equivalent circuit drawing our thevenin's equivalent circuit we simply now come and replace the two ohm resistor we took out so replacing the two ohm resistor we took out we need to now find the current so let's say i2 ohm so the i2 ohm is now equals to the vth over our rth plus the resistor so vth was 7.2157 all over our rth was 1.60 uh, 1.6078 plus 2 doing that we get our total the current through the i2 as 2 ohms so the current through the I2 becomes 2 ohms. This is how we solve this using um, thevenins. And now let us solve it using Nortens. So using Nortens, okay, solving it using Nortens. Now we are going to use Nortens to solve the circuit. Nortens says we should, instead of uh, VTH, we should create a short circuit current and name it IN. And after doing that, after naming it IN, we should simply um, calculate IN by applying KCL and KVL. But today, I will not do that. I'm going to show you a short trick. So after calculating RTH and VTH, we can use a formula to find IN without using KVL. So we just use a short formula to find IN without uh, using KVL here. So we apply with all what I want you to do is that you apply KCL and KVL and find the answer and I will use the shortcut method and also find the answer then we compare. So doing that we can use the formula IN is equals to VTH over RTH if we need IN this is the formula so you can write it somewhere you need to keep this in mind. So I know my VTH from the previous uh, question is the same thing from that question. So VTH over RTH, then I get an answer. So when I get that answer, I get 4.4879 uh, amps as my IN. Then I redraw my circuit again to calculate RN. And over the examples, you realize that in Norton's RTH, so let me just write this down, note, note, note. RTH here is equals to RN. 
Thevenin's resistance is equal to Norton's resistance. No matter the questions you are doing, Thevenin's resistance is always equal to Norton's resistance. So realize that if we want to calculate the Norton's resistance, we will apply the same principles here. Then we will finally come and get our answer as 1.607. Seven. So here is Norton's, not Thevenin's. Uh, here is Norton's. So R Norton's, the Norton's resistance. So after doing that, we now draw our Thevenin's equi uh, Norton's equivalent circuit. So drawing our Norton's equivalent circuit, we calculate the current through. This was two that we take. We took it out. So I two ohm. So to calculate the current through the two ohm resistor, here was four point. 4879 and our RTH is 1. Point, uh, our RN 170. So to calculate the current, we say the I here is equals to the opposite resistor, which is 1.6078 all over the sum of the resistors. That is 2 plus 1.6078 times our 4.4879 then we get our final answer as to the current through this 2 ohm as 2 ohm so when we go back to the previous slide we realize that it's the same the current through the 2 ohm whether you are using Thevenin's or Norton's you end up getting the same answer so this is how you simply use Thevenin's and Norton's to solve the same question it's the same thing but if they are, they've given you a question and you want to, they ask you to use the same, either Thevenin, both Thevenin's and Norton's to solve the question. After solving Thevenin, you can find your IN, Norton's current, by using this formula. By using that formula, this formula. So, and you can find your RTH. Your RTH and your RN is the same, so you don't need to waste too much time. So, thank you. So please, thank you very much for watching up to this time. And please, if this video was really helpful, like, share, subscribe, and comment. Leave a comment. It really motivates us. Thank you very much. And I'm signing out. I'll do a simulations to confirm this uh, results. Thank you very much, guys.